Hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. Hello, hello. Hey, Fang. Hey, Anna. Hey, Vivek and Alia. We have kennel folks in the house. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Hi. Um, this is a super, super exciting episode of What If? And just for everyone who's new to What, what If It Is, this was a kind of a project started by Fang and myself. We both met in Kernel, which Vivek is going to share a little bit about what Kernel is and the amazing work they do. Um, but basically, we met through Kernel, and you know, Kernel was like a web free learning community that really provoked so many questions in us, not just about Web3, but just how we exist in the world and the way things are. And so Fang and I really wanted to kind of create a space to, you know, ask big questions and have conversations with incredible people that are working on, you know, these edges to answer these questions and and moving us in new directions. Um, We talk a lot about, like, how do we build, you know, we're trying to build a new world. The world is, like, in an interesting space right now. A lot of people are trying to you know, build new things, but without without having this kind of radical reimagination of current systems and structures, it's hard to know where to go. And so that's why we've kind of brought together people and tried to have conversations on topics that we think are really like, you know, not just current, but really important and kind of, you know, may have some quite controversial sides to them too. I think the AI art one, you know, we've seen this kind of blow up a lot recently and both sides of the story are coming out. And, and so we really wanted to have one on AI art and invited Anna, who's an incredible artist, not just an AI artist, but a traditional artist who's been doing so much in this space. And also her um, partner uh, at Exquisite Work is Rogers here too, who we'll bring up later. So really excited about that. But yeah, this conversation, we always kick them off on the new moon. And we, we do that because the new moon is meant to be a time for us to kind of really just like reset the cycle, be really open to kind of new things. And so we thought it's a great time for us, you know, to be open-minded and to kind of like, yeah, explore new ideas. And each uh, month we're so lucky in Kernel to have Sister Tibebwa, who is actually the guest on our space on our, on our one last month. Um, she is a member of Kernel and she each month shares with us uh, what the planetary alignments mean. So I thought I'd start with this and then I think we'll we'll start kicking things off. So for the January new moon and accompanying planetary alignments, it fosters collaboration and coming together around common ideals and community (coughs) missions. Seek to welcome a wide spectrum of viewpoints, which is great for us, (laughs) and personalities and know it's a good time to partner with individuals, networks, and organizations that align with your message. Remember the balance of collective and individual sovereignty is achieved when you show up as being authentically you. Brainstorming your own eccentric, refreshing ideas, even if they may seem unorthodox or far-fetched. So the focus of this moon is really the spirit of innovation, magical collaborations, and it's time to radicalize the parts of your life that have felt stagnant, or dull for too long. Time to revive your healthy self-esteem and trust in your own ability to make good decisions. Uh, it's especially an auspicious moment to launch launch anything new that is radically you and unite with others um, that with your own head and heart. So that's from our sister Tevebwa, always beautiful words. Um, and then Fang, I think I'll pass it to you to kind of start introducing everyone. Yeah. Thank you so much, Nirmana, for that beautiful introduction. Um, I'm going to say a couple of housekeeping items or information. Uh, The structure of our conversation, together with Colonel and Anna Dart, will explore this prompt of what if everyone is an artist for the very first 30 minutes. And then um, Anna is a multidisciplinary artist, curator, and futurist who promotes ecological, cultural, and social sustainability at the intersection of new tech. She's also the co-founder of Exquisite Workers, uh, a Gaudi's ambassador, uh, material designer at the digital fashion house, The Fabricant, 
and then top three winner at Claire's AI contest in 2022. And then after, for the remaining 30 minutes, we'll open it up for questions from the audience and we'll be moderating uh, these questions. Last but not least, we'll end with Warrior House that will come up to the stage, who is also an AI artist and founder of Exquisite Workers, together with Anna. Uh, Roger will be kindly sharing some of the pieces uh, made by exploring uh, through AI art the prompt if everyone is an artist. And um, of course, we have a pop that will be able, that you all be able to claim at the end of the conversation. Uh, and now I will give the floor to our colonels towards Viveka and Alia, and after Nirmala will dive into our prompt. Um, Vivek, Alia. Thank you, thank you, Fang. Thank you so much, um, and thank you to uh, Nirmala as well for the beautiful introduction and for bringing in Sister to Bebo. It's it's always been a joy. Um, to be with both Nirmala and Fang and to see uh, this evolution is uh, really a joy. Um, in many ways, um, it's the main point of Kernel uh, is to see if we can learn interesting things together. And typically, uh, they're done in ways that are um, unsupervised and um, generative. Um, and uh, we could speak more about Kernel uh, perhaps uh, at another time, but the part that I wanted to touch on now is um, a bit about our, our thoughts on education and how often it comes in dialogue and how really it sometimes is described in the noun form uh, as in um, something that that, that has happened or um, something a bit more stagnant. But our sense of the word learning uh, and, and real education is it's, it's vibrant, it's happening. And so the particular reading that Nirmala did was really uh, in line with this. So um, the quote that, that I wanted to read about education comes from the meta module in the kernel syllabus, which is a new module that we uh, wrote to try to describe some of the background that um, goes into the thought of the peer learning environment that is current. It says, education relies on the relationship between partners who have already some of the keys, who already have some of the keys, which give access to memories stored in and by the community. It relies on the critical intent of all those who use memories creatively. It relies on the surprise of the unexpected question, which opens new doors for the inquirer and his or her partner. Um, this is the beginning point of where I think our um, particular perspective on this question: um, What if everyone and what if everyone is an artist comes from this sense that um, there's unexpected questions and surprise that come up in the learning journey that also come up in the artistic journey and perhaps weave those things together. And uh, we also are hopeful that memory is something that we could spend time on. Um, our collective memories and the creative use of them. Um, one of the uh, inspirations uh, for Colonel is a man named Doug Engelbart, who uh, was deeply involved with the augmented intelligence movement, which was happening simultaneous to the artificial intelligence movement in the Bay Area in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. And uh, we think perhaps it could be a fun place to play, uh, these ideas of memories stored in and by the community. Um, 
but more than anything, you know, this is just another memory uh, with Feng and Nirmala and with Anna and with new friends. And we're really grateful, uh, Ali and I both, uh, to be here. Thank you. Thanks for that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I love that. I haven't heard of augmented intelligence, so I definitely we should definitely dive into that later. I'm, I'm definitely curious to hear more. Um, so I think, you know, with that, we can kick it off. And I think, like, as Vivek was saying, it's all about dialogue. Dialogue is a way to learn, and that's exactly why we wanted to invite Anna on because I know, Anna, you have been so prolific in this space. Um, you know, we met through working together at Fabricant. You were one of our material creators, and I was just kind of blown away with, not just your art, but just like the force that you are to kind of bring, you know, digital art or any kind of art and now AI art to the world. I think, you know, at the moment it's interesting, right? Like AI art feels like it's all over our feeds um, and it's kind of this very mixed, you know, we have people that are really for it and people that are really quite against it. And I think you're in an interesting position because you were like a traditional artist and have been for a long time. And you've kind of really embraced AI um, art and digital art. And I think it's great to kind of, I think like you being an artist, you'll get your perspective. But then for all the people like myself who are not traditional artists, but have suddenly felt this kind of like, oh, wow, I can just make stuff, you know, and I can create images and create stories. It's quite a powerful thing. And I think, um, I, I feel like that's kind of a side to what we wanted to talk about. But maybe we can start, Anna, you know, tell us a little bit about you and your journey um, into AI art or even into art initially. I'd love to hear that. Hello, everyone. Hello, uh, Nirmala, Funk. Hello, Vivek, Alia, and everyone in the audience. It is a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm so happy to celebrate with you this January's moon, a symbol of new hope and renewed energy. May the light of this new moon guide us on this journey and in during this exciting conversation. Um, thanks for the question, Nirmala. Um, yeah, I can start with giving a little bit of context uh, about how I uh, arrived to this point where I transitioned from traditional art to digital, a little bit of my path as an artist. Um, since a young age, I've been practicing traditional and digital art. Nonetheless, professionally speaking, everything started in 2012 when I began uh, showcasing worldwide my watercolors. And over the last 10 years, I've been working on cross-pollinating the disciplines of visual and performing arts, fashion, high-tech, uh, creative collaborations to explore the place of human emotions and memory and the challenging process of global virtualization. And so searching for my place in intersection of physical and digital, I also looked for the most eco-friendly form of art and I enrolled in performing arts, which was my passion and dream. And I started to paint bigger and capture the flows and of consciousness and movement and color. I uh, shifted from black and white watercolors to bigger paintings and color. That was a big change. And I, find my, I found myself engaged in a deep level with Gaudi's architecture and surrealism. And I learned uh, that from the small sparks of ideas, the, the smallest they might seem, uh, the worlds emerge and that the inner strength and, and the nature are biggest source of inspiration. And I believed and still believe that the art should be innovative and also bring us back to the origins. Uh, art should celebrate the sovereignty and communication of a human with a human beyond time. And let's remember how in 20th century, the world like ours was developing fast and unpredictably. And as we delve into the online era, the serialists, for example, they grapple with the transition from horse drawing carriages to automobiles and living in the new industrial landscape. And the challenge in both occasions is to move with the time and face the unknown. It's certainly true to say that the new tech in the last century has increased at a rate far beyond that of past millennia. And 
entering the metaverse, we're going to face lots of challenges while already facing them. And it's essential to make our statement about what kind of future we look for. And I look for the future, which is culturally rich, which is warm hearted, which is fair to all people and the earth, the future of active, positive engagement, liberating experiences. Um, and in 2020, uh, award-winning Roger House, who is in the audience, he established Exquisite Workers. It is a 10 spin-off of the surrealist Exquisite Corpses, co-created daily on Instagram among about 1,000 artists from all around the globe. And the idea fascinated me that much that I immediately joined the board and we started to work together. And the result of this ongoing collective work with hundreds of fabulous artists between two and 94 years old is the longest living piece of art creative, created in, in real time online. Each of these pieces on Instagram is a creation um, of each of the, the artists, participating artists, and these are their personal universe. And it also space for creative exchange full of diversity, beauty, opportunities. And some of the <clears throat> creators who joined us they worked with the eye. And um, the thinking that I always had is uh, as the great painters used to dive into different art styles, let's say Picasso, he tried all different styles, right? Over the course of his life. Um, now we have the opportunity to use different mediums for experimentation, right? COVID-19 accelerated the process of global virtualization our reality now is more interwoven with technology than ever before. And this has a lot of pondering about the, the future of art industry, right? And in the moment of disruption, I find an essential and even urgent <laughs> for artists uh, and collectors uh, and everyone interested in art to start using digital language for self-expression and nowadays AI. Yeah, thanks, Anna. Yeah, I think there's a few things I want to come back to in your response, I think. And also, just so everyone knows, we've pinned at the top some tweets of Anna's work, but also the Exquisite Workers Project, um, so you can dive into the to seeing the work that they've put together. I think, actually, the Exquisite Workers Project is really interesting and the Exquisite Corpse, and I'd love for you to talk more about that because I think, you know, diving into AI art, it feels like AI art naturally is more of a collective art creation process because you are using this kind of like tool that is collating, you know, information from the entirety of, you know, all these different training models and databases. And then you're, it's kind of channeling it through your prompts or your vision to create. So it does feel like this inherently more collective creation process, but and it feels like in your work you've been doing that a lot. So maybe exquisite corpse, maybe explain what it, because when I first heard that term, I was like, oh, that's an interesting name for an art project. But it does have an interesting story. So maybe you can share that, Anna. Yeah, thank you, Nirmala. Um, well, the exquisite corpse technique is a surrealist method of collaborative art making, which uh, involves a group of artists to create a single artwork by each contributing a section without knowing what the others had created. So originally they would do it by taking a piece of paper and they would, let's say, separate in three parts and each of the participants after making their contribution would introduce a little marks in the board of images. So the next player would take the second part and start from the scratch, let's say, but only having the marks as a reference, right? And, and the result was often strange, seemingly, um, uh, fa really fantastical composition with no sense, but this was precisely the point of this exercise, right? To allow the unconscious mind to take over and create something with an emphasis on chance and randomness. And uh, in, in times of change, I think we should all challenge the status quo by developing these fresh models, novel forms of co-creation and new sources of artistic thought and the surrealists were so skilled at that. And with exquisite workers, uh, we open a life-changing conversation. We, we ask, what would the, the great surrealists 
create if they share the experience of virtual realities? And what can we do to be better ancestors? And I think that if the great masters live now, I, I think that someone would eternalize their colors and digital fashion for sure and integrate AI within their creative processes. And there are certainly uh, similarities between working with hundreds of people across the globe tapping into the, the collective consciousness and working with AI. And there are certainly similarities between working with watercolor, which I did over many years, and AI. Yeah, and and actually just on, um, and I'd love to think, imagine if some of those artists were alive today using AI, what would they come up with? Fang, did you want to jump in with a question? Yeah, I thank you so much, Anna, for um, just sharing your background and your process as well. Um, I was just wondering, like, how how do you think, like, AI changes the, the role of the artist today uh, as, like, so many um, newcomers will, will explore with these tools? Thank you for the question, Fang. Um, I think that it never really been more important to have a personal brand like nowadays. Uh, your community and social media presence will be one of the indicators of your success. And a personal brand helps artists to stand out in a very crowded and competitive digital landscape. Uh, well, we've already seen that with the rays of social media and internet in general. There is an abundance of information uh, which makes it difficult, right, to gain visibility and attention. And the rise of AI and uh, automation has made it easier for everyone to create art. And having personal brand can help artists to prove their authenticity, originality, value. Uh, a personal brand allows artists to communicate their unique vision, aesthetics, and um, it can be a powerful way to differentiate themselves and build the audience, connect. And the community, really what it does, it provides support, feedback, and helps to build a sustainable career. And I think we might ask ourselves um, some questions like, do we have the inner world which is exciting? Are we all in love with life? How kind are you? How supportive? May you be in love every day for the next 75 years <laughs> and out of this love um, transform the world. I love that. That's such a beautiful, <laughs> a beautiful way to create. Is that, if that is your state of mind, Anna, I love it. <laughs> I think I need to like jump into that. Um, but, def but, you know, actually speaking of that, you know, how do you also at the same time, deal with or you know if it comes up in your daily life like people that do kind of look at AI art or kind of you know a lot of artists that kind of look at it with negative point of view or like the same with the metaverse you know there's very much a dystopian view of a lot of these digital spaces and virtual spaces and you know to be fair a lot of it can be really unhealthy and the way that it's kind of engagement farmed is not great um but how do you kind of see beyond that? Like, how do you address if someone is putting AI art or just the process? Because I get that a lot. And, yeah, sometimes I struggle to find words, you know, and, and, again, it's not about, like, creating an argument against it. A lot of it is listening, and I think that's what Colonel really teaches us too, is, like, how through conversation can you learn where their fears or perspective is coming from um, and then maybe address it that way? Thanks, Nirmala. Well, um, I think, yeah, I, I agree with you. The point is all about listening. And I have one painting, which is called There is a Skill in Sharing and There is an Art in Listening. So I think we should be open for all the perspectives and, and be empathetic uh, about different opinions. And, you know, as a traditional artist who transitioned to AI and digital, I, I have sort of double life because I keep um, working in a traditional art space. I have my communication with my collectors. And then 
uh, in parallel, I have this very active, like extremely active life on digital space and Twitter. And so sometimes I share uh, with in traditional art worlds what I learn from in this space. Sometimes I use the word Web3 and, uh, <laughs> and Metaverse. And um, I, I noticed that my traditional art collectors were friends. They, they listen. They, they want to know. And, um, and, and when you stress on the idea that this is a historical moment, uh, you know, they become very attentive. Because I do think that we're standing on the edge of new era with AI is as grand invention as photography, even writing centuries ago. And every time anyone collaborates with AI, we tap into a high level of intelligence and find ultimate understanding through this shared neural networks. And it is free, not judgmental. It is unpredictable. It is unbounded as space. And it helps us expand the imagination, creative in a very pure way, really, without judgment, and focus on the concept, experimentation, creation, empathy. We can learn so much from this process. We can be much more open about our inner feelings and weirdness, and make the art world a little bit more accessible, probably. And I would even say that AI collaborative art is a healing experience, which goes hand in hand with NFT technology because we're digitally reimagining ourselves, right? With AI, we, I, I, I hope that we will uh, see less people getting distracted by negative thoughts and being more um, in awe with, with, yeah, with everything, you know, with everything and have admiration towards themselves and the world and I think the key here is when you try AI and you feel this excitement, please remember this emotion and maintain it. And then when you leave the screen and you go out, keep this emotion alive with every single thing that you do during the day. Thanks, Anna. Yeah, and I think um, I, I do agree, like that feeling of when you, you know, like, and again, I'm not like a, artist but I feel like I do have a lot of creative thoughts and you know things buzzing around my head and then to kind of see what you know mid journey or something like that spits out is you do really get that like hit of excitement and just like you want to do more and play with it which is really cool and I want to dive more into your process and I see Roger's also on stage so it'd be great to kind of have you both share about your process and also if anyone in the audience has any questions um, feel free to request to speak and Fang will bring you up on stage. And also, Colonel, if you have, Vivek or Lee, if you have any questions too, feel free. Um, I think now we'll dive into, you know, just general questions and conversation. But, yeah, maybe Anna and Roger, you could, as we're talking about that, could you share a bit about your process? And I've pinned, we've got the, I've pinned your worlds uh, on foundation actually, Anna, and maybe Roger, if you also wanted to share anything we can pin it too. But yeah, I'd love to hear a little bit about your process. Um, so people who aren't, who haven't tried it yet, like how does it work or how do you start when you're kind of come, trying to come up with something? Thank you for the question, Nirmala. Uh, well, yeah, I, I think I will start with a little, um, a little bit of uh, a description of what AI art is really. It is created by providing the AI engine with a set of words, descriptions, which I use to generate an image, right? And the AI uses thousands of points of reference to create a unique image. And this image can be then refined, upscaled, um, and it requires a significant amount of computing power, many services charge, a subscription fee for access to this uh, AI making tools. And AI art happens when machine and human come together. Right? So there is this human making choices, expressing the unique story, creating what tools provide you with. And uh, you might also hear um, the concept uh, general adversarial network. Uh, this system is made of two components, 
and the generator tries to produce original images while the discriminator contains a database of many images and discriminates whether the generator's work is truly new, right? So there is this dialogue generator trying to outsmart the discriminator. So there are different non-code tools which are accessible. And in my work, I use MeJourney, which is an independent research lab and a non-code tool to create these images from prompts introduced in natural language. And you can make your first 25 images on MeJourney for free, but I think you will not want to, to stop at 25. Um, so first you install uh, Discord and register for an account, it's free. And then you need to get an invitation code for accessing MeJourney beta. And I currently have several collections, right? And and I see certain progress <laughs> in, in how they developed. So last summer I started the first collection in which I really expressed my fascination for the, the new tag. I, there is this poetry um, in which uh, by John Keats, and he says, uh, I want the brighter word than bright. And I thought that, you know, when you search for some very, very bright word, maybe the word that does not exist, or the color which does not exist, you want something so sublime, so wow. <laughs> so you, um, when you tap into uh, artificial intelligence, intelligence, you get this feeling of amazement, right? And this uh, collection is called Akaru Yuri Akarui, and I really explore the concept of brightness, of light, of unpredicted, uh, unpredictability working with the eye. I have another collection which came after in which um, uh, it's called Opera, Passion and Power, in which I made an experiment of listening to opera music while I created the, 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 the pieces. And I think it became really uh, sonic. There, there, it, it's it full of sound somehow. Um, there is another tier uh, collection to me called um, Summer Romance, in which I explore the concept of circles and cycles and how we live through uh, life with um, lightness and at the same time certain weight, because if we uh, give a lot of importance and take the responsibility for each of the actions that we take in life. So it becomes sometimes unbearable. Um, so in each of these collections, and I can <laughs> keep going and going, uh, the last one, no son, no name, I explore something very, very personal to me. And I think that uh, when you work with the eye, since there is such a wide range of possibilities, you really... Um, try to express your inner world because with this accessible tool you can communicate even your memories or uh, the most uh, personal beautiful dreams right and make them visual and accessible for everyone thanks anna uh, um, i do there's something i want to come back to but i wanted to also roger if you had anything to add or wanted to share anything about your own process or we can also come back to you Roger oh, yeah, thank you. hello everyone <clears throat> how are you thank you so much for inviting me to your space it's an, an, an honor to be here but I will speak in Spanish since my English is not, not so fluent that's totally fine and, and Fang and I believe Anna can translate so that's perfect Bien, pues mi experiencia con la inteligencia artificial se remonta al mes de mayo del, del año pasado, 2022. Y bueno, realmente en ese momento no existía ni Dalí, ni Mid Journey, ni todas estas aplicaciones. Solamente existía una una collab de Google que se llamaba Disco Diffusion y, y realmente era bastante, bastante tedioso generar al, algún tipo de obra, ¿no? Realmente se ha, se ha mejorado muchísimo, se ha democratizado mucho 
el, el acceso a, a, a los artistas, a, a la inteligencia artificial con Mid Journey y Dalí, básicamente. Y es algo bastante, bastante reseñable. Paro, hasta aquí. Um, let me translate what Roger just said, uh, <laughs> the best of my abilities. Um, Roger's experience with uh, artificial intelligence started May of last year, 2022. And at the time, Mid Journey actually didn't exist. Uh, what he was working with, it was a collage technology uh, made by Google. Uh, I believe it was called Diffusion. Or, and it was very hard to generate any um, artificially uh, generated art. Um, right now, things have improved greatly thanks to um, tools like Meet Journey or DALI. Thank you. Y bueno, básicamente esto fue como la primera, el primer acceso ¿no? a la inteligencia artificial. Eh, bueno, ha sido un proceso bastante interesante y bueno, digamos que, que es un, una búsqueda continua que no para. ¿no? Eh, me ha interesado bastante representar, o sea, utilizar la inteligencia artificial para crear obras pictóricas utilizando eh, estéticas parecidas a la ilustración o a la pintura. Mm, también me ha interesado bastante el, el hecho de, de jugar a sacar fotografías con la inteligencia artificial. Y también estuve durante un tiempo interesado en la creación de los vídeos. A través de prompts, pues se pueden generar vídeos, ¿no? eh, Bueno, la obra la tengo diseminada en diferentes marketplaces, eh, luego lo puedo pinear para, para que le puedas echar un vistazo. Y, bueno, paro, paro, voy parando, si no, se te gira el trabajo. Uh, no worries, all good. Um... So yeah, it was through through collage the Leah Mid Journey where Roger first had access to to these AI tools, and it has been a very interesting process for him. It has been a continuous search, um, and it it has been interesting for him to use AI to make or create kind of paintings. Uh, taking like the sense of taking pictures with AI art or even creating videos. Um, you can create videos through prompts and you'll have to forgive me, Roger. I don't know how to translate obras pictóricas in English. Um, but um, it's, uh, I guess, like a specific type of uh, indeed like painting like uh, images. And uh, his Rogers work has been um, placed in all different marketplaces, and he's happy to share um, all of this uh, after. Thank you so much. Y nada para el tema que habíais preparado esta esta noche o esta mañana, dependiendo de de donde uno escuche el espacio. Eh, pues he, prepara he preparado dos, eh, dos obras eh, siguiendo el, 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 el tema, ¿no? Que era, ¿qué pasaría si todo el mundo fuera artista? Entonces, bueno, básicamente estas dos piezas eh, giran en torno al concepto del, del ludismo. Eh, el ludismo fue un movimiento que surgió en Gran Bretaña en el siglo XIX <coughs> en el contexto de la revolución industrial y básicamente era una gente que se dedicaba a, a protestar y a quemar fábricas de, de, de textil. Las primeras máquinas eh, que en principio agilizarían el trabajo de la gente ¿no? y entonces la sociedad estuvo muy en contra de, 
de este proceso y hubo bastantes problemas. Entonces, he querido hacer como un paralelismo con este concepto, ¿no? Porque ahora también el tema está sobre de la mesa. Muchísima gente está, está en contra de la inteligencia artificial por el mismo hecho, porque creen que, que van a perder el empleo, que seguramente será verdad. Pero bueno, también hay factores muy positivos que podemos eh, comentar ahora. Um, so, Roger has worked in uh, specific pieces uh, with today's prompt on what if everybody, ev everyone is an artist. And uh, he has created these two pieces based on uh, this movement called Nudismo uh, that was generated in the 19th century during the Industrial Revolution. Um, this was a time where uh, the commoners or the people in the UK were protesting and uh, really trying, uh, burning down factories of textile. And the reason why people were doing that, it was because um, these textile factories will make things more efficient, but then also it will land folks uh, out of their jobs. And uh, he wanted to represent with these two images that we'll share very shortly, um, that it was, it, it, it's a parallel to, to that cause. And it's potentially something also very similar to what is happening to, today with uh, what the role of AI technology that um, some folks might lose their jobs because it will be replaced by uh, artificial intelligent tools. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Roger. And I just pinned an example of your, uh, an example of your work. Oh yeah, I see it's, um, it's up there too. So that's awesome. So people can take a look. Um, Yeah, thank you for sharing that. And it's it's awesome to hear like both of your journeys. I see Madam is a speaker. Do you have a question, Madam? Do you want to unmute and I, I was just sitting in the audience. I think someone brought me up. I'm not sure why. <laughs> But hi. Oh, okay. <laughs> hi, welcome to the stage. Is that N? Hi, N. <laughs> hi. Hi. Um actually one thing I wanted to go back to. Anna, and I think, Roger, what you're t touching on too is like the concept of the inner world uh, that you mentioned, like the inner world and how, you know, getting that inner world or expressing that inner world is, is important. It's like a part of, you know, self-expression. You said, Anna, it's healing and how, you know, for a lot of people, it's, it's quite hard to express that inner world. And I think, you know, that inner world is the artist, I think, in all of us. Um, what would you say is some advice for people that are you know like struggling with that you know because I think a lot of people have said you know don't think of themselves as artists or don't even really connect that deeply with the inner world or maybe they do but they just struggle to express it with the tools that they have which might be you know language or social media or whatever it is as opposed to having the tool set of like an artist you know that you both have um What would you say is some advice? And then I think the other interesting thing I would love to kind of touch on too is like that surrealist practice of, I believe it's like, you know, getting in touch with your subconscious. There's like a few techniques the surrealism movement has. So, yeah, I'd love to hear, yeah, what are some ways people can access that inner world if they're new to that? Anna or Roger, yeah. All right. Uh, well, <clears throat> thank you for the question, Nirmala. And yeah, thank you also, Roger, for sharing his experience because he was one of the um, those who inspired me very, very much to try the technology and and see that it is accessible, it is friendly, it is nice. And um, I, answering the question, I guess uh, we should tap in the concept of the 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 self empowerment, right? And I think that AI gives us this um, assistance, right, 
to express ourselves without judgment, as I mentioned before. So it becomes sort of a friend <laughs> who, who has a lot of experience on, in creating art. And so you can just share your thoughts, your ideas, and then see what comes, right? And um, it is indeed a communication in which you're listening to the answer and then you respond, right? There are many artists or many creators who take the output and make something else with it, make maybe refine it, maybe paint over it. Um, I saw how parents with their kids uh, try to express their imagination and play with this tool, right? So I think the play, the playfulness is the key in here to make it easy, to make it uh, nice, right? To make it beautiful uh, time together with a machine. And, and, you know, we use our phones all day, right? And now we have this opportunity to take this collaboration in the next level and really find in the eye um, this co-creation and and um and experimentation as well right so i think if you come into this space and this technology with a friendly mind <laughs> uh you will enjoy it a lot yeah i think that the playfulness yeah is really important and um i wanted to i i believe like there were some techniques I was trying to Google to to access your subconscious. And I'm also reading, I don't know if anyone else is reading Rick Rubin's new book, The Creative Act, which is all about, um, you know, just like for anyone who's like an artist or whatever, he, he kind of talks about too. Like actually he really, he the first, the name of his first chapter is actually Everyone is an Artist, ironically. So I do like highly recommend that. Um, but he talks a lot about like, and any work that you create is like a col is a collaboration, whether or not you know you might be doing it yourself, but you're collaborating with your references, your you know historically what's happened, what's happening in the world right now, and, and he kind of talks about every act is kind of is collaboration and like being open to that or like dancing with the universe is kind of how just how he describes it too, which I think Anna is what you're kind of you know, alluding to, too, with the playfulness side of it, maybe, as well. Yeah, I'm, if you allow me, I can bring some example of one of my works from the Summer Romance series. So there is some, in some pieces, there are characters which are watching the horizon, right? And the horizon means that in every creative process, we're stepping into this field of possibilities, Right? And there is these balloons over the heads of these characters, which signifies their personal world with their aesthetics, references, favorite music, favorite films, favorite books, tastes, memories, travel destinations. And all these balloons are different. They're even different in shape, not only in, in, in what they um, have inside. Right? And I think with, with AI, people will be able to share these balloons with the world in all these colors. And I'm also very interested how those who never really mm, deeply express their artistic um, side because of this barrier of traditional art skills, uh, how they would share the world with us. Now let's imagine some great doctor, for example, and uh, with the help of this non um, code tools, this person might share their tastes and references and all the stories that he lived or she lived over the past of the years. And with um, digital technology, we could create this metaverse experience in which we could dive into the, the world of this person, an immersive experience, right? And I'm very, very curious about the stories of people, what they would say by using this tech. Thank you. Thank you, Anna, for sharing. Um, now that we arrived to um, the last uh, 
couple of minutes of our space. Uh, I also kind of wanted to share a bit of like housekeeping again. <laughs> um, I just share um, the QR code for a pop uh, as a tweet from the main thread. Um, also, I'm just wondering uh, if anybody has any thoughts, Vivek, Alia, um, have you ever kind of used augmented intelligence before? Um, yeah, I'm wondering if you have any thoughts on that and if not, it's also all right. Yeah, I mean, there's just been so much beautiful uh, thoughts shared. Anna, just thank you. And Roger, thank you so much. I, um, I'm still thinking about the Keats quote uh, for the word that's brighter than bright. So uh, forgive me as I'm kind of thinking through that and, and so many other beautiful thoughts about the inner world and, and otherwise. I think augmented intelligence, there's two things uh, to look into. One would just be the man, his name is Doug Engelbart. Um, he is most famous for uh, his demo at Xerox Park in 1971, which was called The Mother of All Demos, where he showed a demo of a computer that had um, the first mouse, um, a screen with video sharing and basically Zoom calls. Uh, and all sorts of other ideas on files and uh, folder structures and uh, came from this background that uh, was a lot about library science. And um, a lot of his work uh, in augmented intelligence um, was um, simultaneously happening at the same time that a lot of the early artificial intelligence research was happening. And these were contemporaries and contemporary movements. Um, and the approach, I think everyone has kind of um, done in some way. Um, but what Engelbart called uh, these were um, networked improvement communities, networked improvement communities. And um, I think the hope was that the experience of using um, these forms of intelligence could be a communal one and one that centered the uh, relationships and dialogue, not only between computer and human, uh, but humans interacting with each other, interacting with the machines. And so... Uh, in many ways, I think this conversation is a good example of, of augmented intelligence. I feel like I've learned a lot throughout this conversation and um, hope to maybe do more where we play with mid-journey in the middle of the call or find other ways to be with uh, Anna and other artists while we are exploring our own inner worlds. Um, but that's been the case for me today. So thank you. Yeah, okay. I think um, what's interesting, like Vivek, yeah, it's, it's almost like we talked at the start about conversation being like a creative process and like, you know, that's kind of the way most of us express ourselves, you know, through talking, through through words. And, yeah, like you said, maybe mid-journey could be like another because mid-journey is actually interesting in the way that it's in a Discord server and it is like you know, you can actually see what other people are creating while you're creating and you can even, like, you know, remix an image that someone else has created and it could be, that could be really fun, actually, to try, like, a conversation simultaneous with mid-journey, um, you know, to see what kind of wild things come out of that, actually. We should do that. <laughs> um, awesome. Well, I think we, we do have to wrap soon, but I do want to give Anna... Uh, and Roger, just, you know, the last few minutes, if there's anything that you want to share, because I know you have a lot of exciting things coming up. Um, the Super Chief Gallery, you're going to be appearing in, in New York, which is super exciting. Um, I don't know if you want to shout out anything or any other ways people can follow you or engage with what's coming up when you have a really incredible drop on Foundation right now too, which I love. Thank you. Thank you so much for the question. Um, well, yes, on, on uh, January, January 28th, 2023, 
Uh, I'm exhibiting with Super Chief NFT Gallery at World Trade Center in New York. This is very exciting. Um, there is this collaborative piece which um, introduced the world, world's one uh, creative tool and foundation in collaboration with Super Chief NFT Gallery. I was very pleased that they invited me for for this collaboration. And this piece was already collected by Ikijima. Um, beautiful um, work in in and it's one of my most surreal experimental pieces up to date and the interesting thing is that uh, in 2020 uh, you know in the border of 2021 when Roger and myself and exquisite workers are just got introduced in NFT space we were very early actually I made this prediction that uh, mm, there will be more and more digital exhibitions happening. And now in 2023, we see that this is truth, right? And recently there was a show in Art Basel, Miami. And in this show, it, it is an art fair, right? It's a big event, people from all the world coming to see traditional art. And suddenly there was this massive digital 24 foot tall monolith with AI art <laughs> being there all day and um, people were amazed and uh, I'm very excited that these things are happening and that we can um, participate in this history uh, making moments and we can share the knowledge um, with with everyone I, I should say that uh, some months ago uh, with my colleagues, friends, we initiated the Twitter spaces on, on Mondays in which we mm, discover AI tools and uh, speak with creatives weekly. And there are some articles that we publish after these conversations. And I learned so much. You cannot imagine because each of the artists, they have their own mm, perception of these tools, right? Some are fascinated by how AI creates mm, mm, 10 fingers for example right and how we see this imperfection how we are seeing this tool develop and learn this new language of expressing the human ideas like in in in, in the human bodies and and it, it's beautiful it's po poetic um i also like to to hear how the artists uh, say that they don't really like to share their raw outputs and they really say uh, they see it as not really fair <laughs> to to bring it to the world and they do want to paint digitally over it um i'm fascinated by the work of jenny pasan and who also joined exquisite workers at the beginning of 2021 and through her work i discovered ai so there are all these things that you you can uh, join our weekly i collective conversations on mondays do not hesitate uh, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy uh, for this conversation and for open-mindedness <laughs> and uh, for your kindness. And it's always a pleasure to um, yeah to share our personal world. So thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Roger. And I don't know, Vivek Lee, if, if there's any uh, anything for Colonel too that you'd like to share. What's coming up? If people are interested to find out more, where can they go? Alia, go ahead. Oh, I think Alia's off the stage. I'll just speak for both of us. We have Colonel Block Eight upcoming soon. Each block brings together about two hundred and fifty people for about eight weeks in a peer learning environment where we explore um, wisdom trails um, and uh, do it in the context of Web3. Uh, so please be on the lookout on Twitter uh, for the announcement of Block 8, which should come soon. So that would be the best place to follow along. Um, yeah, thank you. Oh, thanks for that. Are you getting? <laughs> yeah, I've kind of been told that potentially the pop um, QR code is not working. Uh, feel free to like message me, and I'll send you a specific link so you can claim the pop for this space. Oh, 
Awesome. Well, I think that is it, everyone. Um, thank you again, Anna, Roger, Vivek, Aaliyah, and also everyone who's joined us. You know, really, it's always great for me. It's morning time, so I'm just starting my day, which is a great way to start the day and feel inspired. Um, but, yeah, we'll be back again next month on the on the new moon of february so and we have we do have a few different ideas for guests so we'll keep you guys posted on who that will be this conversation will also post the recording um and share it so people can listen back to anything and yeah this yeah i think encourage you to follow anna and roger and the amazing work that they're doing and join the twitter space the ai twitter space they also do if you're interested um which i think i pinned Two, uh, it's a great one to kind of just dive in and, and hear from artists working in the space and their processes. So cool. Thanks, everyone. And, yeah, we'll see you again next month. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.